Good afternoon everybody. I got contacted by a YouTuber and I don't know how to pronounce his uh, YouTube handle, but here it is. This is his YouTube handle right here. And if you want to check out his channel, you can go right ahead. And he asked me 10 questions, very hard questions, I can tell you that right now. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you I'm a data processor. I tend to work more on the programming side than I actually do in the actual building of computers. Now, granted, I did build two computers, and I videotaped the whole process, and I put it up on YouTube. That comes in handy when you're at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're trying to program your computer. All of a sudden, your computer crashes, and you need to get back up and running. So yes, it's very handy to know how some of these some of these computer parts will actually work. And give me just a second here. I need to stand this up a little bit better. There, that's better. Sorry about that. But anyway, he was asking me about computer hardware. Some of the stuff I know, some of it I don't. Now I will tell you that I have never put thermal glue on a motherboard and attached a CPU. That is a very delicate operation. I would recommend that you have somebody else do it if you do not have good hand-eye coordination, which I do not. Okay, if you do not have good hand-eye coordination, if you are not really mechanically inclined, do not put thermal glue on a, C on a, on a motherboard and to try to slap the CPU on it. Uh, another thing, I have mounted a motherboard before. I will not do it again because it's a very delicate operation, and I almost messed it up. I came that close to messing it up. Another one I will not do is attach a power supply to a motherboard. I have done that once before. I will not do it again. Um, mainly because you hook it up wrong, there goes $350 to $500 right off the bat. And if you can afford to do that, that's fine. I can't afford to do that, so we won't do that. So, aside from mounting a motherboard or putting thermal glue on a motherboard or attaching a power supply to anything um, and, I, and when I talk about attaching a power supply to anything I'm really meaning attaching a power supply to a motherboard okay it, you can attach your power supply to anything else uh, your hard drive your disk burners uh, you can even stick RAM on your motherboard that's no big deal but what I'm talking about is actually attaching that power supply to that motherboard it's a very delicate operation. You mess it up one inch and you're done. Do not do it unless you know what you're doing. I've not had near enough experience to do that, so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, I got asked about the interrupt request. Okay, and I'm not going to go into the technical details of the interrupt request, mainly because I don't know them that well. I will tell you, though, that each component in your computer has a particular channel that it goes through to communicate with the CPU. Okay, uh, it's just like channels on a on a television. All right, uh, your Discovery Channel comes through on one channel, and your and your um, um, History Channel comes in on another channel, and HBO comes in on another channel. Okay, you have one cable box, but you have all these channels. And depending on which channel you turn to, that's what you get. Okay, so anyway, um, you could say that like I guess the best way to remember it is like your keyboard is like your HBO, your disc burner is like Showtime, your um, hard drive is like the Discovery Channel, and say um, your memory card reader, your USB ports. They're like the History Channel or, or, or Discovery or whatever, you know. It just assign different TV channels to each one of your devices. Even your mouse, say your mouse is the Disney Channel. There you go. Type thing. Anyway, that's the best way to remember that. But what's, what's going on here is, let's say you're typing on your computer. Now that sends a signal to the computer, hey, accept so-and-so keystrokes. Now, the computer says, okay, it's time to save your document in Microsoft Word. You're typing in Microsoft Word, your computer finally says, okay, it's time to save your document. So what it'll do is they say, do not accept any more keystrokes until you save what's already been put in that document. Then you can say, then you can start accepting keystrokes again. Now you've seen this. Uh, it's an autosave feature on Microsoft Word. You've seen this, and so what the co computer does is says, "Okay, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to listen to any more keystrokes 
until I save this document to the hard drive. And then it saves the document to the hard drive and then it accepts more keystrokes. Now you say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, that's not a big deal. Okay. However, you have a buffer in your computer. Okay. And this is called the RAM buffer. And what happens is that the hard drive in your computer spins at one speed, but your disk burner spins at a different speed. So what happens is the computer says, all right, first of all, I want you to take all the files that are going to be burned to the burner, and I want you to store them in RAM. So what the hard drive does is it starts shooting out all this material that it wants to save to the disk burner, and it puts all that material from the hard drive into the RAM. And then the computer says, all right, now that it's all in the RAM, I want you to send everything that's in the RAM up into the disk burner and burn. And that's what it does. Okay? So, that's what we're talking about an interrupt request. Uh, the disk burner and the hard drive communicate with the CPU, and the CPU says, all right, we can't leave and listen to the disk burner until that hard drive has put all the information in the RAM. So the CPU takes the first test, it takes the uh, information from the hard drive, stores in the RAM. Then the computer says, all right, that process is done. Now we need to take all the stuff from the RAM and shove it in the disk burner to burn. And that's what it does. So as the computer is taking all the stuff from the hard drive and throwing it into the RAM, it doesn't even listen to the disk burner. It only listens to the hard drive and the RAM. And it only listens to the RAM once the hard drive starts speeding up. Okay. So first it listens to the hard drive, then it listens to the RAM. Then it listens to the hard drive, then the RAM. And then afterwards it listens to the RAM and it goes to the buffer. Uh, to the Not to the buffer, but to the uh, disk burner. So it listens to the RAM, then a disk burner. RAM, disk burner, so on and so forth. Just like that. All right. And so that's why the performance of your computer might slow down as you're burning a disk because you're sitting there typing and you say, well, man, this thing's going to go slowly. Well, the reason for that is because it's, it's trying to burn stuff on your disk at the same time as you're typing. So it's going to say, all right, don't listen to the keyboard until that disk is burned. So hopefully that explained interrupt request. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. I will get to your other nine questions it's just going to take me a little time. i got to do a little research on this, but hopefully you got the first one down. I will tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.